As you know, on Sunday night or Monday morning of every week, we post a new expository semiotics explaining why we would choose which lectionary readings. But in these readings, our dream is and our, our desire is to help you read the signs and fondle the details and spot the seminal metaphors, the condensed signs and the stories that are a key for preaching to a digital culture. So strap on your seatbelt and join us as we prospect our passages for today. Happy Pentecost Sunday, everybody. In the medieval era, this is when they would release doves in the cathedrals from the upper lofts and just let the doves fly to remind everybody what it was like that the spirit had come. And people would wear red. I, this is about as red as I can get, except my face sometimes. But is, I think this is the reddest shirt I got. But but this is uh, Pentecost. This is the celebration of the birthday of the church. This is when the spirit is released and unleashed. And it's a day of celebration. I'm just going to write to the Pentecost text, Acts 1. I mean, Acts 2, 1 to 21. And... Um, but I want you to hear it a little differently. Uh, this is we do semiotics here, and and so we 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 take in the whole story, and we take seriously every facet of that story. And what hit me this year is I'm looking at this, and and how do you make uh, an old old story fresh and new? Um, and it hit me as I'm praying about this, and and that that the day of Pentecost, if you read the story carefully is as much about the gift of ears as it is the gift of tongues. And, and in fact, the gift of ears comes first before the gift of tongues. And I, I'm not going to read the whole passage, Acts 2, 1 to 21, but I just want to highlight how important the hearing, listening aspect of this story is. And suddenly there came a from heaven a sound. Right, the first manifestation of the Holy Spirit is sound. Now the sound became sight, but first thing. Suddenly from heaven there came a sound, like a rush of a of a violent wind. A sound. Now you don't see a sound; you hear a sound. Um, but here, the eyes are, in many ways, deplatformed, <laughs> and the ears are privileged. The, the ear, you hear sounds, then you see the tongues, but you, the tongues of fire, but you hear. How is it that we hear each of us in our own language as uh, the crowd gathered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language? How is it that we hear? And then again, we hear them speaking in our own languages. So hear, 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 sound. This is all about the ears. And so this is a, a, going to be a little different kind of Pentecost treatment of this story than, than you may have heard before, because I want to really focus on, on the gift of Pentecost, as as much about the gift of ears, our ability to hear, as it is the gift of tongues and speaking. In other words, the gift of hearing and listening, and listening more than hearing, as as much about the gift of speaking tongues. Martin Luther, um, the ears are the only organs of a Christian. Now, you can take this too far. And what they did was, because they wanted to focus on the ears and on the voice of God, they stripped the, uh, stripped the churches of its art and, and took away every other, all of the other senses. And we experienced God with all of our senses. But you see concretely the importance of the ears, 
hearing, listening, and this gift of ears at, that, that comes here in, in the paintings, especially, and this is very explicit and vivid in the Syrian Orthodox Church, which is the oldest church even today, the Church of Martoma in India, the, which is really Syrian Orthodoxy. Uh, but they they have it as a it's kind of a mantra that um, that the 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 um, that Mary did not conceive through her womb. Basically, she, she was impregnated not through her womb womb but through her ears. The Annunciation. You see a dove. And the dove is diving, if you will. The dove is a symbol of the Holy Spirit. Flying not towards Mary's womb, but towards her, her ear. And this is based on this kind of symbolism. You see it in icons and paintings and teachings. That, um, that inclining her ear, that's Psalm 4510. It was inclining her ear. The... the, the the ear gate in in attention to the voice of God, the tongue of God, but it was the ability to hear, and the hearing mode is the receiving mode, and that is what led to the um, the, the impregnation of of Mary. the 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 other key text here that that I want to I want to highlight is the temptation passages where the devil actually embodies those who privilege seeing and showing. And and though Jesus kind of represents those who privilege hearing and, and listening, and then you listen into, into speech. Now, the whole debate revolves around... Um, was on salvation and uh, this duel in the desert with with Satan is about whether salvation is Yeshua, Yeshua something seen after being shown or uh, Yeshua something heard who is listening to God uh, Yeshua or Yahashua and the text based on the liturgical practices of the Psalms which the devil quotes are matched by the servanthood and hearing practices of Deuteronomy, which Jesus quotes. So you've got the devil quoting Psalms and Jesus quoting um, Deuteronomy. And the debate here, and it's been a debate throughout the history of Christianity, is how is Jesus to be represented? How is he to be packaged, if you will, in textual or visual form or in liturgical and oral form? And, and here, even in the exchange with Doubting Thomas, Didymus, his twin, is many me. Uh, he privileges hearing over seeing. The disciples can see him in his resurrected state, but those who hear him without hoping to see him are especially praiseworthy and blessed. So the organ of revelation privileged in the Bible is the ear. And here we have at Pentecost the the gift of ears. My mother had a saying, uh, better in in one year and out in one ear and out the other than in one in one ear and out the mouth. Uh, and so my brothers and I learned uh, to kind of sometimes let things go in one ear and out the other than to go in one ear and then to go out the mouth. But really we're talking here today about the gift of ear and the gift of, of tongues as yes, but they shouldn't go out the mouth before they've come in the ear. Um, so you know, mothers are not always right. <laughs> but So the ears are the primary uh, real estate for the, the follower of Jesus. Um, the eyes, judgment. Ears, uh, the, our primary uh, arena. Um, and and here, here's how it plays out in, in today's, today's story. This is the gift of the Holy Spirit. What the function of the Holy Spirit is to bring Christ to life in every one of us. Bring 
Yeshua. Bring the Messiah. All right. Now, so the Messiah has come. But the Messiah is still coming. Because the each of us, and this is why the ears are so important. Each of us uh, does not have a full understanding or apprehension of who the Messiah is and what and what what he what he can do and and the whole meaning of what it is that Jesus is the Messiah and, and what it means to follow Christ. So, so the Messiah has come, but he's still coming, and he's coming. And growing in us, we grow into the image of Christ and into, into him. The more we hear, that's the gift of ears. We hear. So, so yes, the gift of tongues is speaking, the Messiah has come. That is a proclamation. We need to tell the world, shout it from the mountaintops. Christ is alive. But he's all he's risen, but he's also rising. And this is the the Messiah has come, but he's also still coming. I mean, and, and he's coming and growing and and in our awareness in each one of us. I mean, it, it it's so I, I spend quite a bit of time in, in Jewish communities and and in Jewish communities that are heavily messianic, in other words, they're they're waiting for the Messiah. They are so excited that the Messiah will, will be coming. And I see their excitement about the, the Messiah is coming. And I see how excited they get. And we we actually believe that Jesus is the Messiah. The Messiah has come. And we go, yeah, you know, you know he's come. Yeah. No, no. We ought to be as excited, more excited that he has come than they that, than my friends are that he's coming, he's coming. Yeah. And we're so bland and and blasé about it. Are you kidding me? But the but the point here is that the, the spirit comes upon us so that the Messiah can continue to come every day and be more real and more alive in every one of our lives. Now I don't. I'm not diminishing here the gift of tongues, the gift of of speaking and. And the gift of communicating, even in in messages and in means that other people don't understand. But that's also the importance. What 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 Paul said is, you better have somebody present who can hear what they've said and tongue it and and communicate it. In other words, if if nobody's there with an ear to hear and interpret what they are saying, then it's just full of sound and fury signifying nothing. You got to have the ears. So the ears, the gift of ears is the primary gift of Pentecost and then the gift of tongues because it comes in one ear first. Um it better come in through the ears before it goes out and and we better know the voice of God and and John 10 3, 3 to 5 says we can know the voice of God. And once we know the voice of God, then we can confirm God's voice out in the world. Not conform to the culture's voices, but confirm the voice of God because we've, we've heard it. Um, I love how artists talk about things coming to them. Um, we, we as followers of Jesus know how God speaks to us. That's the ear. Are you here, God, speak, God speaking to you? That's the gift of ears. As the Spirit reveals more about Jesus, more about Jesus, would I know? And, as, and that's the Messiah coming, who has come. Again, I don't want to minimize the, the, the tongue. I, I was thinking about this. There's this magic moment in time. Think about this. When only one person walking on this planet one person in the whole world knew the good news of Jesus is alive. Think about that. Only one person. For that moment, the one person was the whole church. And the whole Jesus story hinged on what that one person would do with the truth. He is 
risen. He is alive. Would she cherish that truth and keep it to herself? Or would she share it and become what even the Roman Catholic Church has to admit is that she is the apostle to the apostles? Of course, this, this one person who was trusted with the whole story was Mary Magdala, or Mary Magdala is Aramaic for strong tower. And so here we have the church founded, really, Peter the Rock and Mary the strong tower. She was there when all the other disciples fled. Mary, strong tower. She stood firm in her faith when all the other disciples doubted. She saw angels when even Jesus' two primary disciples, Peter and John, only saw stacks of dirty laundry. And all four Gospels are of one accord, a common witness. Notice one accord that Mary Magdala was the premier witness to the crucifixion, burial, resurrection of Jesus. And she stays and suffers when everyone else runs and wavers. And this at the time when... The testimony of any woman was unvalued and more than that, not to be trusted. The whole story hangs on one single tongue. So don't minimize the importance of that tongue. The important to use that tongue. But that tongue moved and changed the world because that tongue first heard and received the gospel. I also want to just one more thing here about the gift of ears. And they were of one accord. That word accord means of one, um, of one ear really, of one resonance, of one vibration. These are all music metaphors. And um, it, it, a chord is more than just one mind. They all thought the same thing. It's of one, one spirit. Of course, that one spirit of, is Christ. But that spirit of Christ, again, came first at Pentecost through the ears. So, yes... The tongue speaks, and it ought to wag vigorously. The Messiah has come. Christ is alive. But the ears, the gift of ears, is a lifelong journey in learning. Learn from me, Jesus said. Learn of me. And we learn more and more every day through the Spirit's anointing and appointing more about Jesus, more about the Messiah. He has come and he is coming more fully every day. I mean, he's come for you. What good does it do for the Messiah to come if he hasn't come for you? And so the ears are what bring that voice and that newness and that freshness and that aliveness so that we can have this gift of tongues. But Pentecost, as much about the gift of ears as the gift of tongues. Happy Pentecost. Happy birthday, church. Happy natal day. Mm -hmm.